Let's get right into it here, folks. I'm going to use ChatGPT, and we are going to learn about snort rules, build some good ones. We're going to use this tool of ChatGPT to enhance our learning, enhance our product. You're important. What you produce in industry is important. Let's not use this tool to replace ourselves. Let's use it to enhance our already present skills. Certainly, implementing effective snort rules is great. Thanks, ChatGPT. Blocking known malicious IP addresses. All right, so let's take a look at this first rule here. This is actually a really good one. <laughs> I like it. Let's go through a little bit of the structure on this rule, and I'll tell you why I like it. So we're going to do a snort alert. The protocol is TCP. And the, the source that this is coming from, we can also use it by the directional arrow, arrow here, is any, any IP, any, any source IP, any source port, and the direction is our home net. Home net is a variable that is referring to your home network. You would have had to set that up inside of Snort. At my house, it's a 192.168.1.0 slash 24. That's my private network space. Many people that are potentially watching this have the exact same private network space. Okay. But you have to have it referenced somewhere. So that's where that variable is. The destination port, any. I don't care. I don't care what that port is. We're also going to be providing a message. A message is important because it gives some clarity to like, what is this thing doing? Flow to server. So flow is talking about the direction and the, the relationship between the client and the server. And we don't have a piece in here called established, which would mean that there's an established connection. And in this case, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to alert on established because that means something's already been connected and that's not okay. We want to know as soon as it happens. And then we have what IP are we looking for? And we are referencing, look at, we got the dollar malicious IP. This would be the point in time where in your snort, you would actually have a list potentially of IP addresses. So actually, I like that one quite a bit. I'm going to copy that one. The direction is fine. Oftentimes, I will just leave it pointing to the right because it's showing like, I care about what's happening here internally going out. You can reverse it, but for simplicity's sake, I recommend trying to keep it sort of like in the same direction. I mean, it's up to you, whatever you want to do for this, but I like to keep it in the same, same direction. Alert. I'm actually going to move this, but we're going to replace this guy here. Here, I'm going to copy this rule. And let's look at how we can make this a little bit better. I'm going to take this rule here, copy it, bring it over here. I'm actually going to make this one any. First one is saying stuff that's coming in alert on it if it's coming from a bad IP address. This one's saying anything from internal going out to a bad IP address. Alert for that. I actually prefer this one here because that's showing that a connection is establishing from the inside out. And if we're dealing with a stateful firewall, we know that if we start a connection internally, and go out, the firewall is gonna save that state and that connection is gonna be allowed back in because of that state. So we need to we need to alert on that. And in fact, I'm actually gonna remove this one. It's, a, it's not a bad rule. It's just, I feel like we've made it a little bit better. Let's go to our next, our next rule here. Every time I look and I see snort rules, I'm like, hey, show me some 10, 10 snort rules. And they'll have a scanning one. Sometimes they're like, they look okay and they say they're okay. But when I look at it, it's like all it's catching is flags that are sin flags. Yikes, that's not enough. Sin flags are super duper normal to have in a network. That's how TCP works. We establish a connection. So if all we're doing is alerting on sin flags, that's not sufficient. And, and it's going to create a tremendous amount of false positives. So this rule here is quite interesting. We are looking for sin flags. There's a, there's a variety of different scans. Um, 
to look for it, but we have something called a threshold type threshold track by source count five and seconds up to 60 seconds. Now there's some stuff in this rule actually that I'm, I would have to do a little bit of research on. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy this one. And I would like to know more about actually threshold. This one's pretty straightforward. The sin flag. We're looking for packets that have the sin flag set on uh, threshold. So now we're going to the part where we're going to use ChatGPT to actually help us learn about this rule. What does mean in a snort rule? What does threshold mean? This key is used to set a threshold for alerting based on occurrence of a specific event. All right, so if we get a lot of SYN packets, we're going to be looking for that. In this context, threshold refers to simple rate best based threshold. So a rate, a uh, repeated instance of something. Track by source. This option specifies that the thro threshold should be tracked per source IP address. Okay, that's really important because typically if a network scan is happening, it's coming from a certain machine and it's going to be coming all from that machine. Unless you're doing some of our randomization or IP spoofing where it's changing it up. It could, that is possible, but let's, let's imagine that we're dealing with one machine that's doing scanning. We would be looking for that. That's what this rule is looking for. Is it coming from one machine? repeatedly count five this sets the threshold count to five it means that if a specified event occurs more than five times within the specified time frame an alert will be generated whoa okay so if we get five instances within a certain time frame boom alert and then i guess this is where we do this the time frame this sets the time frame <laughs> yeah right there uh to 60 seconds all right all right all right, all right. Oh, that's not bad. That's not that's not bad. We've just used ChatGPT to explain elements of this snort rule, and now I have a better understanding. I think we can make that rule just a little tighter. Let's go in here and modify it. I'm seeing a lot of external to home net. If you have a, a decent router that's got a a normal firewall, you won't be allowing traffic to just arrive in there. There's other things that can be done to abuse a router from the outside to get in. But let's imagine that you've got a normal situation. Not every router on the planet is being hacked all the time. Okay, we've got stateful firewall that's blocking everything from the out coming in. So that would be home net, internal, doing a scan on something on the internal. Because that would reveal that either something is, so maybe a, an admin is doing a scan on purpose. Okay, that's all right. But what if, there's a compromised machine that is now doing some reconnaissance to hopefully do some lateral movement. On to our next snort rule that we're going to learn from identifying SQL injection attempts. Okay, so that's important. These kind of attacks happening all the time. Again, we're dealing with the outside, talking to an IP address that is internal. The message is fine. We've got flow to the server and establish. So in this video, you know, I've, I've got my browser open. That's a client and ChatGPT is on another machine and it's serving this stuff to me. So I'm a, I'm going to a server and then established means that that three-way handshake has happened. Okay. There's something is established and potentially data is being, is being transferred at this point. Okay. Content. We are looking for specific things here. We would be looking for a pipe at this point. That's what that symbol is. And we can often see pipes in SQL injections. The piece that is interesting is this PCRE. And then we've got a bunch of different characters happening here. Let's use ChatGPT to explore more about what this particular piece is. PCRE. I didn't, I didn't know this. It's... A rule allows for pattern matching using Perl compatible regular expressions. Those are a good thing to learn. ChatGPT is really good at regular expressions. Ugh. 
I use it all the time for that. I don't want to remember how to do this. This is a regular expression pattern enclosed with slash. Let's break down the pattern. Oh, so now it's going to it's actually gonna step through the entire pattern. That's cool. URL encoded, so that would be how we are transferring data. Now, oftentimes, you will see an equal sign in an SQL in injection attempt. Various characters, yeah, slashes, colon. This one makes sense. Honestly, it, it seems like a good snort rule. And it, the thing that I learned was about how to use regular expressions. On to our next rule. I, I've looked at a couple of these, and I wanted to specifically look at this malicious file downloads. Let's check out to see how good this rule is, and if there's anything valuable we can glean from it. We'll zoom on over here. We understand what established means. Content, we're specifically looking for this kind of content. And I feel like it's interesting. Content, disposition, pipe, 3A pipe attachment. I'm not sure what that means. So let's go to ChatGPT and ask it, what is it talking about? Content disposition. This is the first part of the string. It refers to the HTTP header field name. A pipe 3A pipe. This represents the colon character in hexadecimal. <laughs> I learned something. Attachment. This is the second part of the string. It refers to the value of content disposition header, indicating that the content is an attachment. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. And then when we look at this part of the snort rule, it's saying that in the HTTP header, it's specifically looking for things that are an attachment. So there's there's good things about this. I am gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this because I think this is an is a decent rule. However, there's an issue with it. We're alerting TCP home net to external. Yes, that's fine. I don't want to change any of this because we're we're trying to capture traffic that's being downloaded and attachments coming in. Load a server established, so a connection has happened. It's good. It is not specific about the kind of file that's being downloaded. So what all this rule is gonna do is alert for any file being downloaded. So I mean that's not a it's not a bad not a bad thing what that means is that we could be having a lot of false positives if this network is absolutely massive there is potential that many many people are going to be acquiring literal attachments from the internet monitoring is going to be quite noisy and that can be kind of annoying what you might want to do to change this is that instead of making it this entire home network maybe you want to monitor a specific machine so putting in a a specific IP address, you know, maybe it looked like this. And now you're looking for Bob, whenever Bob is going to be downloading files because he's got a history of installing things or downloading things that are like, come on, Bob, right? This is a, this is a completely feasible and justified rule <laughs> to make. You know what? And we're going to leave it there because what we've done is looked at four rules that we we were able to grab from ChatGPT. We we looked at how can we use ChatGPT to get a better depth of knowledge on some of these things that were that were new to me. And now I can add those to my my knowledge base so that when I go and make snort rules again, I kind of have an idea. If I ever look at ChatGPT again and I see that pipe 3A that we had in this in this rule here, I will know what it's talking about. Or if I look and I, I see things like uh, the URL encoding in reg regular expressions, that's pretty cool. I know that now. So that's what ChatGPT is for. It's for getting our current skills and using ChatGPT to build it up and become stronger ourselves and not as a replacement for skill, right? If you're enjoying these videos, Please go ahead and watch some more. Uh, I got a couple on the screen. We'll talk to you soon.